Yellowstone's legendary supervolcano could one day blanket two-thirds of the U.S. in choking ash. Now, artificial intelligence has uncovered 86,000 hidden earthquakes pulsing beneath this massive caldera, ten times more than we thought existed. Scientists once missed these signals entirely. Has this invisible heartbeat changed what we know about Yellowstone's threat, or is the danger still hiding deeper below? To understand what this seismic surge truly means, we need to start with the colossal forces lying just beneath your feet. Yellowstone stretches across the northwest corner of Wyoming, spilling into Idaho and Montana as a vast scar in the Earth's crust. The caldera, an immense sunken basin, measures roughly 30 miles wide and 45 miles long. Its rim rises in gentle arcs, and the land inside dips and rolls, pocked with geysers, hot springs, and steaming vents. This is not an ordinary valley. It is the surface expression of a supervolcano, shaped by forces that once tore open the ground with enough violence to change the continent itself. About 640,000 years ago, a chamber of silica-rich magma built up beneath this region. As pressure mounted, the earth fractured and erupted, blasting out more than 200 cubic miles of ash and debris. The eruption emptied the magma chamber so rapidly that the ground above collapsed, forming the caldera seen today. What remains is a landscape defined by both destruction and renewal, a basin formed in the aftermath of one of Earth's largest known volcanic events. The caldera's size is difficult to grasp. Standing at its edge, the far side disappears into the distance, lost among forests and ridgelines. Highways and rivers cut across what was once a roiling sea of ash and lava. The surface is dotted with thermal features, Old Faithful's regular eruptions, the deep blue of Grand Prismatic Spring, and bubbling mud pots, all fed by the lingering heat below. These are reminders that the supervolcano is not extinct. It is alive, its pulse measured in heat, steam, and the slow movement of the ground. Yellowstone is classified as a supervolcano because of the scale of its past eruptions. The Volcanic Explosivity Index ranks these events at level 8, the highest category, reserved for eruptions that can blanket continents in ash. The last caldera-forming event left a depression so wide that it can only be seen in its entirety from the air. Smaller eruptions and hydrothermal explosions have occurred since, but none have matched the violence of that ancient blast. The sheer dimensions of the caldera are a constant reminder of what lies beneath. Every thermal pool and steaming fissure is linked to the magma system below, a reservoir that still fuels the park's famous features. The landscape is both beautiful and uneasy, shaped by forces that, while quiet now, have not vanished. Understanding this geography is the first step to grasping what the new seismic discoveries reveal and why scientists are watching so closely. Deep beneath Yellowstone, a reservoir of magma sits hidden from view. This underground chamber is not just any molten rock. It is rich in silica, with concentrations reaching or exceeding 40%. That chemistry matters. Silica makes magma thick and sticky, trapping gas and building up pressure. When enough pressure accumulates, the result can be explosive, as history has shown. About 640,000 years ago, that very process emptied the chamber in a catastrophic eruption, leaving behind the vast caldera that stretches across the park today. But the story did not end with that ancient blast. The presence of silica-rich magma means Yellowstone is still considered active, not a relic of the past. The heat-fueling geysers and hot springs comes from the same source that once powered continent-shaping eruptions. Beneath the surface, the magma chamber continues to evolve. It is a dynamic system. Magma slowly cools and crystallizes, gases escape, and new pulses of melt can rise from deeper in the mantle. These processes keep the volcanic system alive, even if the surface appears calm. Volcanologists pay close attention to the chemistry of Yellowstone's magma because it is a key to understanding eruption style and risk. High silica magma, like rhyolite, does not flow easily. Instead, it tends to block vents and build pressure over time. When the system finally releases that pressure, eruptions can be sudden and violent, launching ash and rock high into the atmosphere. These are the kinds of eruptions that define supervolcanoes, rare on a human timescale, but devastating when they occur. 
Today, the magma chamber beneath Yellowstone is not a single uniform body. It is a complex network of partially molten rock, with pockets of melt interspersed with solidified sections. The amount of truly molten material fluctuates, influenced by heat flow from below and the cooling effects above. Scientists estimate that only a fraction of the chamber is liquid at any given time. Yet even this partial melt is enough to drive the park's famous hydrothermal activity and signal that the system remains active. Because of this, seismic monitoring is essential. Earthquakes, ground movement, and changes in the chemistry of hot springs all offer clues about what is happening underground. The chemistry of the magma, the history of past eruptions, and the ongoing signs of heat and movement all point to a living system that demands constant observation. Understanding these details is crucial not just for predicting eruptions, but for interpreting what new data, like the recent AI-driven discoveries, might mean for the future of Yellowstone. In 2008, a new era began for Yellowstone's seismic monitoring. Every tremor across the caldera, no matter how faint, was captured by a dense network of digital seismometers. These instruments recorded around the clock, year after year, building an archive of continuous waveform data unlike anything that came before. For most of the past century, earthquake detection here relied on trained analysts who scanned printed seismograms and marked the sharp signatures of larger quakes by hand. Small events, especially those buried in the noise or overlapping with others, often went unnoticed. By 2022, the archive had grown to a staggering size. 15 years of uninterrupted seismic records stretching from surface geysers down through the fractured rock beneath. The sheer volume made traditional analysis impossible. Even the most dedicated teams could only catalog a fraction of the true activity, focusing on the clearest signals and missing the subtle, clustered microquakes that whisper through Yellowstone's crust. That changed when a group of researchers, led by Professor Bing Lee from Western University, decided to approach the problem with a different set of tools. Their backgrounds spanned earthquake physics, machine learning, and large-scale data science. Instead of relying on human eyes and ears, they built an artificial intelligence pipeline capable of listening to the entire seismic archive at once. The AI was trained to recognize the telltale patterns of earthquakes, sharp onsets, characteristic frequency content, and repeating waveforms, even when those signals were buried in months of background noise. The process was simple in concept, but immense in execution. Every second of data from 2008 to 2022 was fed into the machine learning system. The AI sifted through the continuous waveforms, flagging not just the obvious quakes, but also the smallest, most elusive events. Unlike manual review, which might take months to process a single year, the AI could scan multiple years in just days. It did not tire, it did not overlook patterns, and it was not distracted by the cacophony of geyser eruptions or distant storms. This approach did not just count more earthquakes. It also allowed the team to pinpoint each event's location in three dimensions, mapping the depth and spread of seismicity with far greater precision than ever before. The AI's ability to distinguish overlapping events and cluster them by similarity revealed new structures beneath the caldera, faults, and fracture zones that had been invisible to previous surveys. Professor Lee and his colleagues brought together expertise from Canada, Colombia, and the United States working closely with the United States Geological Survey's Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. Their close collaboration ensured the results would be scientifically rigorous and directly relevant to ongoing hazard monitoring. With the AI pipeline in place, the team prepared to reveal just how much activity had been hiding in plain sight. The numbers they found would upend expectations and change the way scientists interpret Yellowstone's restless ground. The numbers that came back from the AI analysis were staggering. Over 15 years of seismic recordings, nearly 86,000 earthquakes had shaken the ground beneath Yellowstone, 10 times the number previously catalogued by human analysts. This was not a matter of a few missed tremors. It was an entire world of hidden motion, now brought into focus. The new data did not just add dots to a map. It revealed patterns that had been invisible, clusters of earthquakes that appeared and faded in concentrated zones. More than half of these detected events were not isolated or random. 
They gathered in swarms, dense bursts of seismic activity, each swarm containing dozens to hundreds of similar-sized quakes, all packed into a small region and unfolding over days or weeks. These swarms were not scattered haphazardly. They formed in bands, often recurring in the same neighborhoods beneath the caldera. The AI three-dimensional mapping showed the events aligned along rough, immature fault structures. Unlike the smooth, planar faults that slice through California's crust, Yellowstone's faults are jagged and complex, with surfaces that resemble fractals, self-similar patterns repeating at every scale. This roughness means stress does not release in a single clean break. Instead, small patches slip in sequence, triggering a cascade of micro-earthquakes as energy jumps from one irregularity to the next. The shallow depth of these swarms was another critical clue. Most events clustered within a few kilometers of the surface, far above the main magma reservoir. The spatial arrangement, the repetition in time, and the uniformity of earthquake sizes all pointed away from classic main shock followed by aftershocks behavior. In a main shock sequence, a large rupture dominates, followed by a fading trail of aftershocks. Here, there was no main event, just clouds of similar quakes spreading and shifting in bursts. The AI's ability to pinpoint each quake's location in three dimensions created a fingerprint of Yellowstone's restless ground. Swarms traced out the paths of underground fractures, sometimes expanding outward, sometimes contracting, but always revealing the hidden architecture beneath the park. In some places, multiple swarms ran in parallel strips, suggesting networks of faults, each with its own history and stress regime. The roughness and immaturity of these faults allowed them to slip in small, repeated steps rather than in catastrophic breaks. This new view of Yellowstone's seismicity was not just about counting more earthquakes. It was about seeing the physical structure of the caldera in unprecedented detail. The patterns hinted at processes deeper than simple tectonic stress. Something was driving these swarms in a way that did not match the behavior of classic faults. The next step was to interpret what forces could create such persistent, shallow, and organized seismic activity, and what that meant for the supervolcano's future. Volcanologists examining Yellowstone's new earthquake map see something both familiar and reassuring. The majority of the 86,000 newly detected quakes are shallow, clustered in known zones, and repeat in cycles, behavior that fits the signature of a hydrothermal system at work. Dr. Lila Moreno, an independent volcanologist, says these swarms are driven by pulses of underground water and steam, not by magma on the move. She describes the process as a natural release valve. Pressure builds as hot water and gas accumulate, then slips through fractures in the rock, triggering bursts of small earthquakes. This is Yellowstone's normal rhythm, a seismic heartbeat that has likely pulsed for centuries. The AI-powered catalog does not just count these events. It captures their shape in three dimensions, creating a detailed fingerprint of the caldera's everyday activity. Each swarm traces the geometry of faults and fractures, revealing where fluids move and how the system breathes. This fingerprint acts as a baseline, a reference map of what healthy, expected behavior looks like. If patterns start to deviate, if earthquakes grow deeper, cluster in new locations, or show signs of upward migration, those changes will stand out immediately against the established norm. Dr. Moreno points to a simple checklist scientists use to separate routine swarms from red flags. Normal hydrothermal quakes are shallow, repeat in the same areas, and stay within a narrow range of magnitudes. Red flags would include swarms that start deeper than five kilometers, move upward over time, or escalate in size and duration. Other warning signs are, are ground swelling, rapid changes in gas emissions, or swarms appearing in places that have been quiet for decades. None of these indicators are present now. Instead, the data show a system cycling through familiar patterns, with each episode of seismicity matching the fingerprint established by years of monitoring. Mike Poland of the USGS Yellowstone Volcano Observatory echoes this assessment. He emphasizes that the new AI-driven catalog is not a cause for alarm, but a tool for clarity. By knowing exactly what normal looks like, scientists can respond quickly if the volcano's behavior shifts. The fingerprint serves as an early warning framework, not just for Yellowstone, but for volcanic systems worldwide. 
With this map in hand, researchers can watch for the subtle changes that matter most, confident that the baseline is clearer than ever before. The annual chance of a super eruption at Yellowstone stands at 0.00014%, less than 1 in 700,000. Yet this vanishingly small probability does not mean the volcano can be ignored. For hazard planners, emergency managers, and policymakers, the value of the AI-powered seismic fingerprint lies in its ability to turn uncertainty into actionable knowledge. Dr. Fiona Russo, a policy specialist in volcanic risk, points out that a clear baseline of normal activity is the foundation for every decision, from aviation rerouting to evacuation planning. Without it, the first sign of trouble could be missed, or worse, misinterpreted. The lessons from Yellowstone already echo abroad. In Italy, researchers applied similar AI tools to Campi Flegre, a restless caldera on the edge of Naples. There, tens of thousands of previously undetected microquakes were uncovered, revealing new fault segments and subtle shifts in the underground stress field. The discovery prompted local authorities to revise hazard maps and reconsider where new construction or critical infrastructure should be allowed. It also sharpened the focus on early warning systems, integrating real-time AI monitoring into routine emergency drills. For the geothermal industry, the stakes are just as real. Yellowstone's detailed seismic fingerprint helps identify zones where hot water and steam flow safely through fractures and where pressure may be building behind a geological seal. Drilling into the wrong spot could trigger a hydrothermal explosion, as seen in smaller geothermal fields worldwide. Energy policy now leans on this new data, balancing the promise of clean power against the risk of disturbing a volatile system. In some cases, the AI maps have led to moratoriums on drilling near sensitive zones, while in others, they have greenlit projects in areas proven to be stable. The integration of AI detected microquakes into global hazard management is not just about Yellowstone. It is about building a playbook for volcanic and seismic risk everywhere. With each new fingerprint, scientists and policymakers gain a sharper tool for protecting lives, guiding development, and harnessing Earth's heat without courting disaster. Today, AI gives us a high-resolution look beneath one of Earth's most volatile landscapes. This fingerprint is not just data, it is our early warning, our chance to notice danger before it is too late. As more supervolcanoes and fault zones come under this digital microscope, the difference between disaster and survival may hinge on what we choose to see and on what we refuse to ignore. Stay curious and stay alert.